Hello and welcome to another class of ABM Eva Sciences. This is Abhishek with you. So today we will be talking about charge ups rule. So charge ups rule is very important uh, because there are several problems coming in the qualifying exams like CSA, UC NET or any other type of similar exams all over India. So you should know and clear your concept that what is charge ups rule and how it applies. So there are two types of rule, first parity rule and second parity rule. So before that, we will be knowing what is charge ups rule. So charge ups rule state that the DNA from any cell of all organisms should have a 1 is to 1 ratio of pyrimidine and purine bases. And more specifically, if you say so, the amount of guanine should be equal to cytosine and the amount of adesine should be equal to uh, thymine. This pattern is found in both strands of DNA and uh, they are discovered by Erwin charge up. Now, if you coming to first parity rule, here we know that DNA strands are made up of adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. So adenine base pairs with thymine and guanine base pairs with cytosine. So there are two hydrogen bonds between A and T and there are three hydrogen bonds between G and C. So according to the rule, the percentage of a and T and the G and C should be 1 is to 1 comparing to both the strands. So the percent of A equivalent to percent of T and the percent of G equivalent to percent of C. So this holds the first parity rule. The rigorous validation of the rule constitutes the basis of Watson click pairs in the DNA double helix model. Now here I have given some of the organisms and their ATGC content where you can see the difference between their contents. So from different organisms the number of A, T, G and C percentage differs according to their composition. Now there are several organisms which do not have double stranded DNA. They have single stranded DNA. So there comes the second parity rule. So the second parity rule states that though it comprises similar to first parity rule that is A and T equivalent, G and C equivalent, but here we will be seeing that there is a sign which is saying that it is not totally equal of A to T or G to C. So this describes only a global feature of the base composition in a single stranded DNA. So in the single stranded DNA, the percentage of A, T, G, C may not be similar but may be comparable to each other. So that is the second parity rule. Now if you are coming to the research for second parity rule, it says that the composition of DNA varies from one species to another, in particular in the relative amounts of A, G, T and C bases. Such evidence of molecular diversity which had been presumed absent from DNA made DNA more credible candidate for genetic material than protein. Now you know that always A pairs with T and G pairs with C because there are compatibility issues. Uh, in making hydrogen bonds. So that's the reason but there are different organisms and this applies the first parity rule applies to eukaryotic chromosomes and bacterial chromosomes, the double stranded DNA viral genomes and the archaeal chromosomes. It does not apply to organelle chromosomes like mitochondria and plastids where uh, they are smaller than 20 to 30 kbp uh, DNA nor does it apply to single standard DNA. So in that cases or any type of RNA genome. So in that case, a second parity rule comes. So both the rules are very important to understand when you are applying that rule to the particular double stranded DNA or maybe single stranded DNA. So that's the basic of charges rule. So if you like my video, please subscribe. Thank you very much.